Well, good morning, everybody, and, and thank you for joining me today. Uh, this morning, I want to talk real quickly about four really important things uh, that we probably need to know about God. Uh, first is this, you know, I think it's really, really uh, imperative that we know this, that God is creator. And he created the heavens and the earth, the stars, the universe, the galaxies, and everything that is in them. Uh, he created out of nothing, uh, that there was no store for him to go buy. Uh, pieces and parts or uh, secret ingredients uh, that God spoke things into existence. And in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, it says, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and God gave us light, which led to day and night. He gave us the air, he gave us water, he gave us land, he gave us animals, fish, and birds of the air. Uh, you know, God is the creator of all things. I think it's important we also understand that uh, we are, you and I, are his crowning creation. That once God created all the essential components to uh, to be able to sustain life, he creates us. And he, uh, he said, let us, uh, talking about uh, himself in three persons, right? The Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. He says, let us create man or make them in our image. And these are significant words because uh, they're really the first place we see with three persons of, of God uh, in creation, that they were all three there. That the Hebrew word for us actually means plural. Uh, it's a plurality meaning three. And it's not a coincidence. I think that, that God is telling us that all three were there at creation. Um, so God created you and I in his image. And this would lead me to believe that uh, we are created in his likeness, right? That the Bible talks about the face of God, the arms of God, the heart of God, the mind of God, the character of God, the, the love of God, the spirit, right? The, the, the anger or the wrath of God, God's emotions. So we all exhibit those attributes because, well, frankly, it tells us we are created in his image. So if we are representation or, or creation from him, then it makes sense that we would have his same attributes. We're also created with responsibilities and duties uh, to care for the earth, uh, for animals, and for one another. Uh, but the most important feature about us is what many of us miss and even why we even exist in the first place. We were created to be in relationship and to love God. That's that's our purpose. Uh, and I think that's why so many of us are, are uh, so many people in the world are so unhappy. They're still searching for that very thing that God created us to do and we're not finding it because we uh, either haven't been taught or haven't haven't uh, had the, uh, the, the good news expressed to us in a way that we can respond. And that's why uh, we're his crowning creation, that uh, no other creation has that purpose or his image. Uh, so when God creates uh, Adam and Eve, right, uh, there's this moment where they're in the garden. Everything is perfect, right? And uh, we often call this uh, moment the, 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 the garden or the perfection or paradise, but something happens. Right, uh, Adam and Eve uh, fall into temptation. Satan shows up uh, and ruins everything. Man and God were in harmony. They had peace and they had love. But Satan rebels against God and tempts Eve to break the one rule. Don't eat from the fruit, the tree of the garden. Uh, and you know the story. Uh, Eve ate and Adam followed. And they both did what God told them not to do. And Satan tempted them said, surely, you know, God is bluffing. He's he's withholding something from you. He doesn't want you to be like him. So how can one bite of a piece of fruit kill you? Now, we know this because uh, of one sin, Adam and Eve were removed from God's presence in heaven. And they were sent out because God is holy and there is... Uh, they were no longer pure and sinless. Paradise was ruined by one sin, and we still feel that those consequences. And because of one sin, death entered into the world. So I guess 
if you're looking for something to blame all of life's wrongs on, there it is. There it is, right? It, it's sin is killing us literally, uh, and it's also killing creation around us. But that's not where the story ends. The God loves us so much that He refuses to give up on us. He He wants to give us second chances. He wants us to come back to Him, and that's why He sent His Son Jesus into the very creation that He spoke into existence uh, to save us from death, to, from sin, and from darkness. Jesus came from heaven to be a perfect sacrifice for every sin that has ever been committed. His body and his blood and his life were a ransom for our sins. And until Jesus came, uh, we were dead in our sins. And Jesus purchased us from the slavery of sin and has set us free. So I, I guess um, to kind of wrap this up this morning, with those three pieces, uh, uh, you know, call them chapters or whatever you want to call them, uh, whatever you want to hang that on, or it gives you pieces to, to move through in creation. So in what chapter or what phase are you choosing to live in, right? Um, I think for a lot of us, uh, you know, we say we want to live in the forgiveness. We want to save. We want to save. We want to live in the in the saved position and the yeah, redeemed and rescued, but uh, are we really allowing ourselves to do that, or are we still living in the fall or the past? Uh, so think about this morning and where you would like to uh, live your life in, and to what grace, to what joy, and what happiness uh, that how fulfilling that would be. Uh, let's pray. Father God, we love you so much. We thank you, Father, for uh, your love. Uh, we thank you for your, the hope that you give us through your son, Jesus. Uh, we love you. Uh, we pray all these things in your name. Amen. Hey, I'll see you guys Sunday. God bless. Bye-bye.